if you are growing tomatoes here in the Northeast, you are growing tomato diseases here in the Northeast, and here are the three main diseases you will likely have. Late blight, early blight, and subtoria leaf spot, and I now will share the key diagnostics to know so you can identify them. So first and foremost, late blight. Light blight has a very fun Latin name, Phytophthora infestans, which marvelously translates to all-consuming plant destroyer, which is quite apropos. If you get light blight a week later, you might have a black, oozy mass of what used to be a tomato plant, and you won't be harvesting any more tomatoes. And the key things to look for, scouting, number one, is so important. Look on the lowermost leaves, on the oldest leaves on your tomato plant. That's where often diseases will pop up first. And you're looking for black, dark brown lesions that don't necessarily stay within the confines of your leaf vein structure. And if you see that they're actually powdery, if they have kind of a, on the underside of the leaves, a sporulating, grayish, whitish mold, you have some very progressed late blight. And if you don't necessarily see that sporulation right away, you can take a little piece of the affected tissue, whether it's a leaf, a stem, or a fruit, take it inside, put it in a plastic bag and with a wet paper towel, and overnight, closed on your kitchen counter, you will see that if it is indeed late blight, it will sporulate. So if you wake up in the morning and you see the spores, you have late blight. If you don't see the spores, that whitish mold, you don't have late blight great news. If you do have late bite, you need to go to your garden, pull up the entire plant, shove it in a plastic bag, close it tight, and ship it off somewhere, anywhere. But make sure you close it so you're not spreading the disease all over the countryside. And also, pull out your stakes. With a dilute bleach solution, just clean them off so the spores don't continue to grow. And the good news is, twofold. You can still save seeds from any mature fruit that's on a plant that has late blight, and you don't have to worry about it overwintering in the soil. Late blight only survives the winter on living tissue, and no part of a tomato is going to survive the winter. Um, and your potatoes, I'm pointing at our old potato field covered in cover crop by the way, your potatoes are very closely related to tomatoes, and so if you, late blight can go between potato and tomato crops easily. So although it won't survive the winter on your tomatoes, they may on your potatoes. So especially if you identify late blight on your potatoes, be sure that any volunteers that may come up the next season are promptly put in plastic bags and shipped off as well. There's another kind of blight that we have commonly here in the Northeast, early blight. And that looks very similar, but here's the key difference. A they will have concentric rings in those dark brown, blackish lesions. And they could be on the leaf, on the stem, on the fruit, but those concentric rings are the key diagnostic for early blight. And if I can separate myself from the plant from the fact that this plant is dying, they're kind of beautiful. They look like brown topographic maps. And yeah, they're very dramatic and beautiful and devastating. And the good news is, your plant isn't going to die within a week, 10 days, like it will with early blight, late blight. With early blight, you have at least a month. You might even have a few more weeks if you can, as soon as you identify it, take off all of those lowermost leaves that are affected, put them in a plastic bag that's closed, ship them off. And if you can effectively remove those plant tissues soon enough, you'll have a few extra weeks but the inevitability of that plant's mortality is on the horizon. Another piece about early blight, it's seed borne. So you definitely don't want to be saving seed from any tomato that has early blight. You can technically save them, and if you can hot water treat them, they'll be just fine. But hot water treatment is this whole scenario, and for just your backyard home scale seed saver, just don't bother saving any seeds from your plants that have early blight. Um, our final disease that I'll share today is septoria leaf spot, which you can marvelously see. All of these lovely little leaf spots that are have dark brown margins. Often the centers will be lighter brown, almost tan, tawny colored, and they also will arrive first thing on the lowermost leaves. And if you can, they're similar to early blight in that 
you have about a month before the plant really finally takes a dive and dies. Um, but if you can remove those lowermost leaves as soon as you identify it, you've got some options. You've got maybe a couple, three weeks, maybe more, maybe less, but you've got a little more production out of that plant if you can take the leaves off immediately. Identifying diseases is kind of fun for me. So don't hesitate, just email any photographs you have to Fruition Seeds. You can also check in with your local extension agent, your cooperative extension agent, and they are marvelous. And it's also important for them to know as diseases are traveling and developing in different parts of the country, um, you're doing the world a favor by um, sharing your disease questions and identity with your local Cornell Cooperative Extension and have fun. Don't be shy. It's totally devastating, but it's another fun game. And there's a lot of things you can do to prevent disease. Uh, we do several other videos that share some really proactive things you can do to prevent disease on your farm and in your garden. And in the meantime, best of luck and keep in touch.